session of Performance Art Dailies here in Toronto. Um, this is a satellite activity of the 7011D Performance Art Festival hosted by and sponsored by and paid for by the Toronto Free Gallery, organized by the Toronto Free Gallery, um, run by Heather Haynes, um, and supported through the now defunct Special Assistance for Performance Art Program of the Canada Council. Um, it's been a fabulous set of <coughs> discussions so far. This is the last of our regular discussion periods. Tomorrow will be our final question period uh, and also the closing panel of the festival. And instead of being here at Toronto Free Gallery, it will be at two o'clock at X Space, and that will be the closing event of the festival. Um, what do I have to tell people today? Uh, I think Michael Fernandez continues performing in the neighborhood today until five o'clock. Um, at various points, doing doing things with people. Is, it, is that the title? Yeah. Um, you're here, so you're probably going to miss it, but Carlos Monroy is down at uh, <coughs> the St. Lawrence Market until 3 o'clock. And then this evening, of course, there's the regular um, performances at X Space beginning at 8 o'clock. Um, so, uh, today's panel is hosted by Boyana Vidikanich, who performed in the first week of the festival. Uh, it was part of this process that we're sort of opening up the dialogue between local artists and visiting artists. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so Boyana, of course, uh, is one of our local artists who's, who's agreed to initiate the discussion or keep the discussion going. And this whole process is really, <coughs> to a large degree, about trying to open up the inevitable discussion that happens outside of the performances themselves uh, to a larger public and everything will be uh, captured and eventually appear on the web, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Okay, Boyana, I'm going to hand things over to you. Okay. Thank you for that nice intro. Um, I want to say good morning, but it's 12.30, so I feel like it's morning. Um, Festival time is definitely. That's right, yes. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's just act as if it's morning. Um, so I want to welcome everybody uh, to the panel. And I just want to say for my own personal um, kind of um, view is that I'm really happy to have uh, witnessed your uh, performances last night. Really enjoy them. And I'm happy to be here to discuss certain things or aspects of your work. Um, so I would, I, I don't know how to do this. Maybe we should start from one end to the other. Who wants to? Uh, Pancho, are you more, more at ease with starting? Because Martin is kind of getting her, getting her groove. So do, well, are you okay with starting? I'm close to the door, so I Okay, good, like good, I good. Okay, okay. So um, I guess I just wanted to kind of spend some time um, on the work that you've done uh, for the festival and maybe from there, we can carry on some sort of discussion about what your larger works are and what you know how how performance as a practice figures in that. So, what would you say that uh, that the? I guess my question then for you and I asked this last night: the relationship between the aesthetic and the political in the work, and the kind of improvisation that you had to do for for last night's performance. So. I know that you said Mexican time, and it's true. I, I miss one week of the show because visa stuff, you know, visa problems. Uh, actually, I have to confess that it was a little bit my fault, but Paul, <laughs> Paul should not listen to that because if you go to the embassy saying that I want a visa, but I, don't, I can't let my passport because I'm going to go somewhere else and... Uh, they said, well, if you don't leave your passport, you cannot have a visa. And then I said, well, but if I leave my passport, I cannot go to San Francisco. So it was a mess. But anyway, I, at the end, I'm here. And uh, it made me uh, change a, a little part of my performance mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I'm doing this series of performances using these fish tanks uh, and different liquids. Uh, for example, I have been working with milk, with coke, with water, tequila, wine, and orange juice, and different liquids, and different words, of course, no? 
or sometimes I don't use a word, but I use a, a something like um, situation, for example. No? Then, yesterday I was going to use the word art, uh, but I decided to use the word visa because it made more sense with the stuff I was living. And uh, the, my project is just like to have this ephemeral moment of the explosion of the fish tank with the bat. But um, just uh, speaking about to feel, you know the process that whatever process in life that you are just, uh, you start something and then you go filling, filling how do you say that, filling up mm -hmm. uh, of situations like a relationship or something. Uh, so sometimes it go bad, it goes bad and then it's full and sometimes you are like pissed off of that and then uh, you cannot stop those situations and then you would like to have a bat and destroy everything. <laughs> but um, I think it's a metaphor, is that word? Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's, that's my idea, no? like to create uh, an ephemeral image and just, uh, I like how even it's anger stuff, you can have a beautiful image of the explosion and mm -hmm. well, that was like the idea, no? Like sometimes it's better to end something than to keep uh, carrying that on you, no? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I'll, I always, no, of course, I work with uh, food because I love food. I don't drink, I don't smoke, but I have my my buys, no, I like to eat and I, for example, I think I'm going to work very soon with chocolate, but the thing is, um, I have been doing performances with food like for the last 15 years. Uh, I actually, I met Paul like 12 years ago when I came here and I was public of the 7A, 11D, I don't know which issue, maybe the second or something like that. And um, I was doing a, a, another series I was working in that is called Formal Picnic. And I was eating in the streets with a lot of people, like a picnic, but different because it was with no, with no, with no the regular uh, rules of a picnic. I had a table, a folding table, folding chair, tablecloth check and I was uh, eating very formal food and uh, to see what happened with the people on the street and uh, I did that in some cities in Quebec and Montreal and here and New York and in Mexico of course so that's the thing I'm working with food and I like it a lot and I think food is full of images and all this imaginary of food is very very rich to work with and uh, well, I think that's like my stuff. No, maybe we can. I can give the microphone to somebody else, and then we can <coughs> chat okay. more. Okay, we'll continue. So, um, our next uh, panel presenters um, are Sar Sarah Latou Latourneau, and okay, um, and Francis O'Shaughnessy, who are coming from Quebec, and. Um, they are a duo um, who perform together and also um, separately. And um, I was interested in, in watching your performance and how you work together last night. And I was just interested in that, in that relationship that you build through the work um, and what, what working together um, accomplishes and how it enriches your, your, your work. So if you can maybe say a couple of things about that and... Hello. <laughs> um, we uh, we know each other for like five years or yeah, almost. Yeah, since uh, 2006. Yeah. And uh, since 2006, we made a uh, different uh, collaboration. Yes. Not only in, in performance, in music, uh, photo installation, and video. And then that's only in 2009 that we decided to make a performance together because we saw each other in different uh, festival um, different places and and we know each other real well 
and uh, I like the stuff that Sarah is doing, so uh, <laughs> it was uh, a good uh, to, to maybe work together. Yes, and it's like a, a challenge to, to, mix, to mix our two work like and, uh, and our two language and the, 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 the things we, we used to like to talk about. Um, I mostly talk about uh, woman's woman's stuff and uh, <laughs> 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 what a surprise! <laughs> and uh, Francis uh, mostly uh, it tells in images uh, some stuff about his personal life or his. his I, I can say that maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a, then, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That maybe you have to know him to, to see that. <laughs> for, for me, um, performance is like a, a painting. So I, I present uh, different images. And uh, it's like uh, a, ser a surreal of a canvas that uh, we present. So different kind of action who are related together and uh, as kind of a story, if you can say. And and for me, it's uh, very important to to get uh, uh, in our performance. Mm -hmm. We consider it uh, a lot of the, the the public, so that's why we use uh, strategies uh, to keep the, concent the concentration of uh, the um, the spectator, uh, kind of uh, by example the su surprise, mm -hmm. and that keep awake uh, this kind of concentration. Yes. We like to um, to do some stuff. Uh, there is also in in our work together. There is a, a me doing something and Francis doing something at the same time. So like these two images that comes together, and then then we do a little thing at the same time or together, and then just just like all alone in our in our stuff, but together sometime. And these little surprises are are quite important for us. Yeah. And um, yes, it's it, uh, always really poetic, and um, we try to we we think of action to do and to like uh, it's mostly a choreography, but with some stuff that happen at the time because there is always <coughs> this moment and it's a work about images about things we want to say about and a lot about presence, be there and do the stuff. And yes, so it's kind of a, a common performance with individual uh, space and uh, energy. So that's why uh, we uh, work a lot on uh, the rhythm and the posture to, uh, to keep uh, always, you know, uh, dynamic, the kind of uh, the, the, the two bodies in the space. And uh, I think <coughs> this is uh, important. And we we use a lot uh, in the creation and not not really in the destruction, um, in the poetic way, well, as uh, you told. <laughs> Give her the. <laughs> I can see you're a, you're a dynamic duo. It's an interesting kind of. I, I find that, that looking at the two of you performing and just um, in conversation is really interesting. So, um, a lot of cross references between life relationships and then the performative relationships. I guess they feed feed off of each other. And um, last but not least, Martin Viale, who's coming from Quebec as well. And um, we had a short conversation before about her work and the ways in which the body. Um, and presence and time are are uh, working for you in your in your actions. So if you can kind of introduce us to some of that, and then we'll continue the conversation about topic. it. I know it is a huge <laughs> topic, but yeah. um, we have to start somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, actually, like I said, uh, Boyana, right? Um, for me, the example I like to take is. Um, you know, after the rain, when you walk on the street and there's a tiny leaves with um, one drop of water on it, that stuff for me is present that we ignore. 
we don't see anymore. We don't pay attention. So I try to put that in perspective in my work. And so the body is very important, but my body is everybody. So it's not my identity, like me, my issues, whatever. It, it's not important. It's how to create new images using the body and the relationship to the space, to the time, and also to people coming in. Um, so it's like a, it's like a canvas. The body is like a, a not a canvas, but a surface. no, not surface, like a mediator. So I approach the presence of the body like sometimes an object also, but with history. And so it's without my control, you know, I come with everything I have and everything I don't know I have that rise up during the performance. Thank you. Um, and when we were discussing the leaf on the ra in the rain, um, yesterday night I was um, talking to someone who was saying, it is so amazing to be at an event where you have performance art because it's like stopping, <coughs> excuse me, it's like stopping in time, in a sense, mm -hmm. because everything else kind of has a different sort of a rhythm once you're out in the, you know, outside of the space where this is happening. And, you know, I was thinking about people, there was a lot of people going to bars and places outside of the X space where, we're, where we had the um, last night's performances. And yet inside, there was a sort of a different kind of embodiment of time and space and presence, which was really interesting. And you don't get to, you don't get to that stage unless you make a choice mm -hmm. to stand and take time to take it in. And that's why I guess performance art is really interesting in this bridging between everyday life and, and art, because it, 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 it I guess, offers opportunities to stop and, and think about moments that are important. So I don't know, would you agree with that? Well, I was thinking that uh, I find funny that um, um, here we're listening that body is like a canvas or something. And I used to say that, that it was a canvas where you're going to draw a story or something like that. But now I, I change a little bit my idea that body is a container, you know, because now I'm working with these fish tanks, with, with, with these containers as a, as a metaphor of something, no? So I like that performance definition can be very personal and very different each time that you can say that is a canvas or is a container or is a place where something happened. And I like that thing that you're saying about time, that, that performance has I its own time, and you can manipulate it as you need. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I work also sometimes with uh, somebody else in a performance. For example, there's this guy from Germany who went to Mexico because Clemente <coughs> Padin, this uh, artist from Uruguay, uh, told him that I was living in Mexico, so he went to Mexico, he contacted me, and we decided to do a performance. We didn't know each other, and we just saw like three hours the night before the performance, and we went to a shop, and we buy this kind of shop, like dollar, uh, Dollarama or something like that, and we just buy a lot of things, and we didn't know what the other bought, and um, we were doing things uh, with all those stuff. And um, even we, don't, we didn't know each other, we could do a lot of things reacting to the, to the other, no? So I like to see this piece, like your piece, uh, working together, uh, doing different things. And even there happened some things that were not uh, thought. Uh, you can keep on 
uh, going with the with the stuff. You know, it's, I think that kind of improvisation is very interesting because it's just like life. You are not thinking what's gonna happen when you are going out of the door. Maybe you have a place to go or somewhere to go, but in the road you will find a lot of different stuff that you will need to 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 to, to have in your life, no? And uh, that's how I feel performance art sometimes. Like uh, the last thing I say is just like um, I don't know the name in in, in English, lupa. You know Lupa? This... <coughs> no. No. No, something that you, the you like look uh, to see um, things bigger. Oh, the um, <laughs> mirror. No, no, no. Magnifier, magnifying yeah. glass. Yeah, yes. sometimes performance is like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you are watching all the things that you see with that. And you have, uh, you think, well, sometimes I think that everything at the street is a performance. If you see like different actions, like just people passing in a bicycle or something, if you think it's an, it's an action itself, but um, is of course not the intention to pass by in front of the gallery with a bike, a performance, but it is a performance. So I, I like those things, like to be with my, how do you say? Lupa, loop, magnifying glass. With my mic, magnifying glass. Really nice. I like lupa. Well, when you go with your lupa, yes. and then you, <laughs> you see these things and you discover a lot of actions where there are not performance art. You know what I mean? That's so that's what I like. I think that that's really interesting because I, in my conversations with all of you, there was an issue of improvisation and the relationship between improvising and everyday life actions, but. In, in those conversations, all of you had a different take on what improvisation meant for your work. So, you know, where yours was, I had to negotiate the fact that I couldn't get into the country and that really, you know, impacted how I'm gonna change the performance. You guys are collaborating with each other and kind of feeding off of each other and changing some of the stuff. And then, Martin, you said that improvisation for you meant a different kind of negotiation that's more meditative in, in a sense, or sort of. So if you can kind of maybe um, speak to that, uh, I'd be interested because well, yeah. I find it important. It's more like um, the creation of images are very important to me, but also uh, there's no fixed concept. You know, for example, the piece I did uh, in this festival I found myself um, in a problematic during it because uh, the piece was a sky, right, in the basement. And I was there doing each one and then realized that, wait a minute, the sky is not organized mm -hmm. like this. So I want to leave myself that room because otherwise I don't feel alive. Mm -hmm. You know, then I needed to react. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this is true, the, the sky is not fixed. What do I do? I must adapt, I must create something new. And so, in a way, it's putting yourself at risk because you don't know if it's going to work or not. And that's not the important thing. Mm -hmm. is that the important thing is that you, you learn something, you, you go further in your reflection mm -hmm. of the work and of life in general mm -hmm. also. And so, did the two of you do a kind of negotiation with those accidents, but also what your bodies do with each other? So how, how does that happen? How does improvisation work when there's two people performing? Because, you know, once we're alone, right, yeah. it's easier to make those changes than when it's two people. Yeah. Uh. You, you want to say no? Okay. No, okay. <laughs> um, then yes, but uh, y yes, yes. Um, we, I, I used to, we, we made a performance uh, together in uh, New Brunswick, and um, uh, we were, uh, I was uh, working with uh, Einstein, I wanted to work with Einstein and improvisation, so I was working with uh, an animal. So I used to work with uh, cats, uh, mouse, and fish, but fish, well, you know, 
and uh, <laughs> and the cats. Uh, I, I like to, to to work with kind of animal that uh, is not like a dog. Like okay, sit. Okay, stay. Da, da, da. And that uh, this kind of uh, little animals get a very strong present and do what you want. So that's uh, you have to to deal with it and to uh, improvise, uh, impro do uh, improvisation uh, with uh, actions. And in this action, um, so I was there with uh, a, a big piano who was uh, in this room. And I said, OK, Sarah, during the performance, you will play piano. But I don't play piano. <laughs> so uh, the, the thing is to play with uh, the instinct, uh, to make a kind of ambience, and to, to deal with uh, the switch situation, uh, what, what I'm doing, uh, the cats don't want to go there, uh, what happened, uh, what I can do. So this is kind of a, a tricky thing, because it's, it's like, um, it's like, um, okay, I will give another example. <laughs> I, 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 I used to work with kids also of four years old, and you have to deal with this kind of uh, situation that uh, you are the performer and the observator in, in the same time in your performance. So you're performing, so the gesture is faster as your brain, that what you want to do, and then you think after that, what you, you made uh, with your brain, oh, um, I was doing that, and what, what is the next? So, and with the kids or the cats, uh, you, the thing is that uh, you're a kind uh, of a camera who's checking you in your performance, you see you, and uh, what's going on with this kid, what's going on with this cat, and, and you, you realize that, uh, okay, now what's the, the next step, what uh, he's doing now, and, and to, f to go uh, further uh, with uh, the piece. And with this kind of improvisation, that can bring you someone else, because when you work uh, alone, you, you can get a, a, a blank or something like that, but you always decide uh, what to do and what, what's going on. And, but with this kind of, uh, with animals or um, kids, there is always something that uh, you, you don't control, and this is the kind of liberty is giving to you. Uh, well, what about with Sarah? <laughs> with Sarah. <laughs> with Sarah. Uh, our, our work together, in, I see in my work, <laughs> and I will come to, to yeah. our work yeah. after, the, um, the improvisation, I, I work some stuff only improvised, like I, I did the, this exercise that become, became a, a, a movie, a, a little film, like I would say. Like to, um, I had my, my map and, and my Mac and the, 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 the little uh, like a camera in the, in the screen. And like during like a lot, like maybe 12 hours at different times, maybe like 10 minutes at, at a time, uh, like on maybe two weeks, I just opened the camera and did something, like anything, like just n not knowing anything about what I would do. So sometimes I was dancing, sometimes I was improvising poems, sometimes I was just there doing nothing, sometimes I was just putting my face on the wall, anything. And this was a really great exercise. And sometimes I, I didn't remember after that I did the stuff. Like, oh my god, I did that. <laughs> like I was uh, telling a story and then going up and sing a song and go uh, to find a um, uh, lip, lip seal, like, like to... Uh, like lip, lip balm. Like, I, I, was, I had my my lips uh, dry, and then I just did that while like, say, like singing, and, and then I came back and I did my action, and then I, after I, I, I saw this and I, oh my god, I don't remember that I did that, it was really, and I found some, uh, some, some action in that uh, experimentation, it was really great, and like um, group work in some other occasion, but in my performance, like, 
that I do in festival, I do improvisation as a less less place. It's more the improvisation is more in the presence, in like some little thing that can happen or not. Maybe sometimes it will be as I as I thought it was going to be, but some if if nothing come out, there won't be improvisation. But if like in one performance, I was I was. Um, taking off my shoes and then I, I realized that the brand of my shoes was uh, fairy tales are true. So I, I saw this and I said, oh, I have to show this to everyone. So I, I, I show my shoes and I throw it. And this was complete improvisation. I didn't know I was going to do that, but it just, I had to do it. But usually I don't really, uh, in, in, it's in, in the presence and in the, like, oh, I'm here and I, this is for me is a kind of improvisation. And together we work more like that, I think, for the moment, because we work usually alone. We don't really work that much together, but in a lot of stuff, and we know really well each other, but it's, it's mostly really, uh, we know what we're going to do, and some things happen that, like yesterday, uh, he broke my house and he was not supposed to do it. It was oh, an accident. I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah. He was supposed to break your house. <laughs> I thought it was just a, you know, a comment on, on, on building the house. But I, I liked that. I liked that he did. I was like, you break my house. <laughs> in, in, our, uh, in our work, uh, this kind of thing that happened, it's uh, often mistakes. <laughs> this kind of improvisation and okay, I broke this, or she was uh, she wanted to make something with the house. I know, but uh, now <laughs> she's what? just a, a look, and you know that <laughs> what she <laughs> when she was like that and just <laughs> look the house, look at me. Okay, <laughs> I continue. So it, this is always kind of we 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 work and someone can become a para uh, uh, parasite. On, on each other and this is kind disturbing of disturbing a little bit the action this is, this is exactly what I was asking yeah. you about because you know you're working with two individuals and I was wondering about this very fact right so she does something and then you come in and you wreck it yeah. not that you want it to wreck it but what happens right there's tension between the two of you when you're performing because you cannot control the other yes. person yes. and that's no. why I was you know saying you were talking about cats and dogs and all that but you know what happens with the other person right and and, and this is really interesting to me that this tension you know I was thinking uh, Marina Abramovich and Ula you know at one point like they had to you know uh, take their own paths right because at one point like it's it's a very close, intimate relationship when you're performing. Yes, yes, sure. And so I'm really, I, I find that this is, um, it, there's a potential, but also danger in that, right? Mm. But yeah, I think it, we we have a, a lot of uh, confidence, com, com, confidence, confidence, trust. trust. Yes, we. I think we we tr trust in each other. Like even even if we forgot something or I forgot something, yeah. it 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 I will bring something, something else and just. I think there is, it's based on trust, I think. And I, th I think that this word trust is also interesting because, Martin, you were saying how you had to change at one point your whole idea of your performance because the sky is not organized, right? Yeah, you can't hesitate. You and can then you trust. had to make that decision yeah. that's based on trusting your own gut or your own instinct, which can be very, you know, like you don't know what the outcome of this will be. And I find that that's, what the beauty of performance is, is that, that you have to make these decisions and you don't know what the outcomes, how people really act. So would you say that this is something that you're also appreciating and that, that this is something that you feed off of? Yeah, totally. Like the part of the instinct is very important, but it's a very uh, fine line huh, between uh, going too much, going mm -hmm. not enough, being too much inside, being too much outside, it's how to compose, it's the work of composition. Mm -hmm. That's and the way I see it, yeah. And also this, this idea of intuition, and I know this is kind of, uh, you know, some people would consider it problematic, um, but I'm interested in it because I'm interested also in the relationship between the political and the aesthetic and the performative. <laughs> 
And it seems to me that often, if you look at the history of performance art or history of art, especially in the 20th century, there was a lot of talk about feminist actions and intuition. And, but when you really think about it, intuition is something that all artists are using. And, I'm, and, and I think that where, where it becomes really obvious is in performance art, because there's these minute-by-minute minute decisions that you have to do, and they're dependent on you trusting yourself in that moment. Um, that gives richness to the work. So I don't know if you would see. Well, the I think that if you, if you you put the process in front, I think that even um, accident or like I don't know, there's no mistakes. Yeah. There's only a process, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you need to assume it to the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise it's uh, otherwise it's showing mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. And for me, that's not what performance is about, you know. I don't know yet what it's all about, because mm -hmm. otherwise I wouldn't do it, right? But, and I think that's mostly the, why I chose durational work, because the, the fine line between life and art, the, the, the work in the studio and the work in indoor or outdoor uh, is very... Um, there's no answer. You need to create the answer while you're going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is this the performance is not about showing yourself? That's not for me. It's interesting because yeah. in earlier discussions, yeah, no, I know. That was exactly what it was about. Yeah. I well, I questioned it. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm right there right now in my process. Like, why, why do I do this? And, and do I really want to show? Like, Showing involves like, uh, okay, this this is who I am. So you don't you don't invite the person to to have a discussion with you. You're always talking. And and so for me, it's important like to um, the people who come to see are as important as me performing. I have nothing to show them. Like I, I cannot say, oh, th this is the way to do. Like you have your own way, I have my own way, so I, I'm just proposing something that is, is quite open. So, but the idea of showing is, is uh, yeah, it's, it's a question. But that doesn't mean, for example, that you're going to talk to people during mm -hmm. the No, and, and, and also... They, they ask you a question or something. And, and also when you do a durational, you're, you're, you're with your, your mind, the mind doesn't stop thinking and the ego doesn't disappear. And so when you're alone in the room, is is it brings a lot of emotion too. <laughs> well, that was a bit extreme. <laughs> but it's yeah. it's very it's like Paul. I'm really interested in this differentiation between showing and performativity. Well, yeah. And and I think that it's and it's also the difference between life or not or no difference between life and performance because you were earlier were saying that everything then is a performance right that everything can be seen yeah. as a performance yeah the lupa yeah. <laughs> yes but yeah but the intention is the difference well yesterday she was asking me like um uh if my performance was always political, no? Because of the visa team. team. Not because of that. Well, but... <laughs> but That's not the reason why I but, asked you. Well, but let me say what okay, I want okay, to okay. say, and maybe <laughs> I, sorry, can, sorry. I can make sense without saying that. Okay. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, uh, when she asked me, that's what she asked me yesterday, <laughs> I answered, no, I don't work with political performance, but um, <laughs> but the thing is, I realize that when you perform, you do political immediately, because you are saying something and you are putting, putting your body somewhere that you are going to be seen. So um, I think it's naive to think that you're not being political somehow. Uh, yesterday, my performance was more political than often Most because 
Huh? Like more overtly, like openly political. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. because because the visa stuff is very <laughs> political. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So um, if I use the other word I was going to use, which was art, I think it's another kind of political stuff. But the thing is, uh, as soon as I do that with that word, it became very political and very like, I don't know, I think I have to include that word because that was I was living and it's all the things that you are saying that you have to improvisate, improvisar mm -hmm. sometimes uh, what you are, what's happening around you. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, when I used to do my picnics, uh, one day I was busted. Mm -hmm. Police came and they took me to the police office <coughs> and uh, and uh, I realized that it was very political because mm -hmm. I was eating by myself a, in a place where everybody was running to take the plane or something like that. And in a country where people, um, well, you know, I don't know if it's third or fourth or fifth world, but anyway, uh, people uh, with all these things about food and money and work and, and all those stuff. Um, and I was like, like playing actually, like a, like a kid with, uh, you know, like girls play when they are young, mm -hmm. you're having the tea, mm -hmm. the, the tea, Par tea party. The tea party. I feel like that, no? that I am doing my tea party. And of course it was political and I didn't realize because mm -hmm. my head is not in that place. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, all these things I'm saying is just to say that uh, the intention is very important in performance. Mm -hmm. No, it's like. Uh, what you want to say, what you want to do, and how you do it is the way that it's going to be watched or understood by everybody, even everybody is thinking something else, mm -hmm. like subjectivity, mm -hmm. this word, subjectividad. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, I don't know, it's like, of course, like, I, I like it. Uh, did, did you like it? You like it? It's like everybody likes something or not, but because each one of us are with different education or interests and so it's very, very, when I try to explain performance, it's very hard to do it. But if you don't think and you just watch, it's very interesting how it just comes into you and you feel it. That, that's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I was, because yesterday night when we talked about the political, you said that, you know, for you it's political because the aesthetic choice or the aesthetic engagement is political. Any aesthetic engagement, because at one point, um, and Martin, I think that this is what you were also, in a sense, and I would agree with you, is that at one point where you may choose to make a certain step to to um, engage with whoever is there, to enter a dialogue with people who come to see the performance. In a way, they become, they're no longer viewers, they're participants. And that moment in which these subjectivities meld and then there's no more subject and the object. That that's, and this is, you know, thinking about the porous membranes of the body and of who we are and, you know, rep metaphorically representing both the inside and the outside. And I think in that breaking apart between the subject and the object and entering these kinds of relationships with whoever is there is political. And then every act, aesthetic act in a sense becomes political. It doesn't have to be, you know, well, I would say it doesn't have to hit you over the head to be to be that. Yeah, everything is everything. Mm -hmm. It's not only political. It's, it involves a lot of things that sometimes with talking about it, we may, you know, language is difficult because it puts uh, something, it's an ending, right? But there's so much things going on. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm careful about using like, one category, you know, because to me, it's, it, it, there's some flu zone. It's not that, uh, okay, this is, this is political, this is universal, this is, it's, it's all so complex. Mm -hmm. And it, that's the beauty of it, is that we can't understand everything. Yeah. Oh, it's just, uh, and, and I had 
that experience, I, this is not really the same thing, but I was saying this morning uh, at the breakfast table that uh, when you are there by, by yourself involved in a duration, people think that you're deaf. I hear so much things. And, and sometimes they talk about me, <laughs> and I'm there, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I hear everything, and I, I, I carry that, and I'm like, oh, this is very interesting. Human beings are very interesting, mm -hmm. like the way they interact with you, and there is something there they need to touch, and, you know, it, it's, um, so to, to reduce it to one thing, like, uh, like the, my question after your talk, Rodi, yesterday, was, and I still have that today, you know, what, what is political art? Like, what, what should we, how to do this, you know? It's, uh, it's complex, it's, uh, I, I don't think we can, uh, it's, it's just like we, we're opening some little doors. But that's the point, that's what I'm trying to say, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have with to be anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything, yeah. but just the engagement with the other whoever that is. For me, For the, me, the most important thing is, is, is to be true to myself and, mm -hmm. and to be, mm -hmm. go, okay, at the end of the day, I ask myself, okay, in the, that performance, did I learn something? Mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. I, did I learn something new? And did I, do I find that I, 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 I went into the essential? If not, then next time, you know? Mm -hmm. But I carry this. Mm -hmm. It's not good or bad. But it's a question. If, I think if performance can raise some questions, and not only in one element, well, for me, the job is done, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by not showing mm -hmm. yourself. Like, mm -hmm. this is not interesting to me to say, oh, you know, I'm like this and like this. No, but, you know, how can we meet? On which level? And what do we say? And how do we say it? And that's the, just before we started this, I was saying, you know, aren't we all exhibitionists? And then that's the point, right? Is that you're not showing yourself. You're, you're, you're entering a relationship where you're asking yourself some questions and also asking the others some questions. And it's not, it's not about any sort of showing of oneself. I don't Although think it's it is a part. To make a performance without showing yourself. Yeah. Sorry? I don't think it's possible to make a performance mm -hmm. without showing yourself. No, yes, it is. I mean, I think yeah. you're more into this, I'm not, I'm not exhibition. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 to show yourself. Yeah. No, but. Okay, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the word showing. Yeah, yeah. but. Okay. Le mot c'est démontrer, you know, like, uh, I'm not. Yeah, to the, yeah, exactly, to exhibit. Like, for me, I, I, I understand that some people need to do that, and I respect that. But for me, it doesn't, even when I watch this, I, I, I don't learn anything. This is not, you know, it doesn't bring me somewhere. But that's personal, right? Next time you do a performance, you have to be naked. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I was. <laughs> Partly. I'm naked. <laughs> no, I want to say something about this, I think. It's like when I do this fish tank, sometimes, uh, well, of course, I'm showing myself as everybody doing a performance. Uh, and uh, the thing is, it's very important for me that there's, there are things that I'm not speaking about in the performance. For example, uh, yesterday I was thinking the things I hate, for example, and nobody knows, no? Like all the problems I had with my boss, and all the <laughs> things that happen that make me angry in Mexico or wherever. And uh, for example, the problems at my house, the rent, or whatever. And then when I do that, when I crash or smash or whatever with the bat, I feel like happy. Like, like I put the name of my boss <laughs> in the fish tank. Well, of course I didn't, but in my head and I do whatever, I do what I want to do, but I am not going to do ever, you know? So of course you show a part, I think, of yourself, but there is a lot of things that you don't need to show because it's not important. Yeah. And, uh, and what I was saying is that everybody will put a, something of themselves in the piece that you are doing. Sometimes it will be connecting and sometimes it's going to be not connecting. But still, uh, performance art, I think, is that, like a 
like a big uh, thing like where you put a lot of electric stuff to take energy, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, you, can, you can plug as much as you want, no? Well, it's hard to translate for me, <laughs> but I'm doing metaphors. Well, I, I think there's a, there's a particular, like if we look at Bosco's performance and the other performances, you were really feeding off the audience in a way of, you really, to me it's almost like clown in the sense of part of the, the, the idea of clown is take the audience into your world. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're really playing off of them. It's like <coughs> your gestures speak to them. You look at them, you see what they're saying, you reflect back something. You're really playing with them very directly, whereas the other performances were more like, I'm doing my world, you can watch, but not like, and I'm going to bring you right into it. It's more... It's yeah, more you're more always bringing them, though. <laughs> you're always bringing them. Like, they're entering the space, they're there with you. You know, you're, you're, not, you're not maybe throwing them on, on their face, faces, but you're bringing them into your world but also. I would say there's a difference in terms of uh, stylistically, both with... Uh, Francis and Sarah's performance and with your performance. Of course, it, it's completely up to the audience how much they enter your mm -hmm. world. Whereas with Pancho, he's, 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 he's taking going out yeah, of their way yeah. to, uh, you know, to, to attract there them. Forms of the, there were forms of address starting at the end of the year. Yeah. Yesterday, the performance was an example. I think we had five, six distinct forms of address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the tailing or inviting the audience from him to Michael, you know, both sitting behind the microphone or standing behind the microphone and speaking, but the the nature of the address or the appeal was, you know, almost over mm -hmm. in a sense. But they but were reading with their story, <laughs> you know, I mean, so the, the kind of okay, But, 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 I want to say something. Like, for example, uh, the other performance that I have done with the fish tanks, I, it was yesterday very funny because all the things happened. I didn't expect that all these things was, were going to happen. For example, when I did the other performances with tequila or with milk, with the different liquids, I didn't uh, go into the audience. Like, well, when, when I was in China with the milk, I had cookies, animal shaped, and I was going to the, to the audience to offer them a cookie. But the other times, it was no music. It was very like ritualistic way to do it, very silence and everybody in silence and nobody speak and nobody nothing. So it was very different. But yesterday that um, Carlos Monroy told me that I should play this music and I said, well, I don't, I don't have the music I want, so I prefer to be in silence. And then he said, well, listen this. And then I said, okay, that's what I need. So I, I, I played that music and it was very funny. <laughs> and then also it's the first time that the, the, the things of the bottle go to the audience because it's the first time I, I work with champagne. No, it was so <laughs> so expensive, no? So it was very very funny that they go to the audience and I was very scared that I hit somebody <laughs> <laughs> or, or something and thank God she was the one who I received that on the head and Oh no. that was you. It's like yeah. ouch. That's <laughs> and all these things make that the performance became funny. But uh, I didn't, I wasn't thinking that it was going to be funny, you know? Uh, I was asking about humor in your work last night. Yeah, I, so and I like humor, but I was not uh, expecting humor yesterday. And as soon as I, I noticed okay. that there was all this humor around, I used that. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you learn with performance that suddenly you have to take things passing like this. So I did that yesterday. Like, I took, I aproveché. Yeah, I you improvised. No, aproveché. No, okay, okay. Aprovechar. Okay. You know aprovechar? Oh, appropriate. Talk no. 
Aprovechar is something like, it's a verb that means something that you have something and uh, you are taking the best part of the stuff. What's the word? Exploit? <laughs> Extrapolate. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> no, that, that, uh, well, I, I don't know why I find the, w the difficult word. It's like profit. 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 Harvest. Harvest. Profit. 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 I use the thing that I was not expecting that yeah. it was going to happen to make it better. You know what I mean? So it was uh, very good for me that, that all those things happened because I use humor and I use a lot of things that I wasn't expecting and uh, it, they helped me to feel myself more comfortable and, uh, and uh, I don't know. I think it worked better that if I just were like very, you know, like, mm. you know, like very serious. So if if you if I if you have lemons, <laughs> make a lemonade. Yes. If if life throws you lemons, make a lemonade. Is that yeah? Okay. <laughs> but but how do you then like how's you know Martini was saying that you know you listen to people and in many ways I I I've done I a. No, I mean, but you hear them, right? You yeah. like hear what they're saying, and they love the gossip. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> and it's and I was I had a similar experience when I was at um, doing a performance for Nuit Blanche, and I was lying on bed, bree uh, no, not on bed, uh, sorry, in a hallway, and people were supposed to kind of go over me, but I didn't in any way wanted to, you know, engage with them, and and it was just this surreal experience where people were like, and I was hearing them saying things to me, is she dead? They were making comments about the body, of my body. They were, I had some two women lie on each side of me and they were taking pictures, like clowning around. Like and I really, Nini? yeah, like Francis Nini. Okay. Uh, and so it was really surreal to have that experience where you hear what people are saying and they're acting as if you're an object, right? As if you don't hear them. And that really fed back into the performance, right? It's like really fed by, and I kept thinking about it while I was performing. So in a way, you know, it's not as overtly dealing with the audience like you did, but then that energy that you can't help but hear feeds back into what you do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's yeah. the experience that you would. You're like a witness, right? E exactly. You're yeah. Witnessing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but and also sometimes very um, personal, intimate stuff, right? Which is you know I thought maybe I should write it down, you know, some some idea. Mm -hmm. But then I was, you know, in, in the process of the work. So, but it would be something to do because mm -hmm. it makes you feel really weird to feel like an object. Mm -hmm. But it's also in a way the gaze right, is turned around where they don't realize that you're processing all of this. And then there's like an internal dialogue that happens and in a way you become the observer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's kind of very interesting, that power relationship, right? Where does it, where is it? And the I question mean, of power as well in, perform in performance art, like where, how much of it do you give away? How much do you take in? And then where is that line? Anyone? Because we often deal with power, you know? Yeah, it's a tricky question. Well, it's something, yeah, it's, uh, it can be very uh, scary to talk about power, right? Because mm -hmm. we don't want to talk about it. Um, I don't know, I need to think. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's switching around. Because we're so focused on creating images that, in a way, we objectify ourselves. Mm -hmm. When people look at images, they're looking at generally our culture, they're looking at a TV screen or a painting or whatever, it's, it's an object they're looking at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know, I just feel like people are focused on creating, or people, artists, 
Comet. Comet, yes. <laughs> familiar smell. All familiar. I saw this too, you know, potentially hit in the head by cork or, you know, in these moments where you created interaction in, on a different level, but I think quite comparative, you brought us into a space that had elements all through it. I mean, I relate to your piece because I myself performed it in that cell, that space, and it's a very charged place. Mm -hmm. But I also, I, don't, I would like this to, for anyone who saw the performance between Kiki and Claudia yesterday, where there may not be something overtly happening where they're looking at you sometimes. I caught your eye a few times, suddenly, but like, I felt such a resonance of energy, in fact, in all of your pieces, where I was like, I am here, I'm a part of your piece, you need my energy in a way, as much as I am yours. Well, I'm there, that's a, you know, an interesting thing. I kept thinking about the fourth wall, I don't know what other language to mm. describe it, the theatrical term, but that space between us, that space that goes across that line, where my energy is affecting yours and yours is affecting mine, and how you definitely interpret it differently for each of you, that power mm -hmm. that you have and our power to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference, I think, that when we talked about the showing, I think that showing involves some sort of, in the sense that you were trying to describe it, in a sense that it involves this didactic relationship. It's like, okay, here I am, and this yeah. I'm going to demonstrate, and now you're going to witness my demonstration, and there's a certain amount of power in that that you're demonstrating. Whereas performance art is, is the, the exact opposite. Right? It's not didactic. I don't think that it should be didactic in the sense that it's teaching anyone anything. It's teaching, and, and in the first place, I think it's teaching yourself something in a way, right, through the act of performing. But I don't know if that, that, that you would agree with that. I don't, I don't, you're not trying to teach anyone anything. Well, no. Are you? <laughs> no, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree that uh, the, the one who learned more is yourself when yeah, you do a yeah, performance yeah. because you have yeah. even you're sharing experiences with uh, with the people who is there uh, you are learning a lot of things about yourself and about the things happening that you didn't expect or you expected but they change or something no I think that's the thing I, I like about performance that uh, you don't need a, a, a certain space to do it or I mean you can do whatever you want Mm -hmm. Or in this time of festivals, uh, of course, you, you have a, a place to do it, but uh, you can do whatever you want. Like, you can make the place go with you. And it's very, very interesting for me. Uh, I would say that I, I'm not trying to really learn something, even if it happens anyway or to teach some, something to the audience or something like that. But I want to, for me, it's, it's really important, it's really important that the, the, the audience and I and us can feel something. It's a, about feeling, I think. It's about, you, you, you're there with me, even if you sit down and I'm mm -hmm. up, like, like we are all alone, uh, all together in that, that moment and that action, and for me, it's really... Uh, and that's what that. I, that kind of comes back to what I was saying earlier, is that <coughs> performance art has the ability to, to kind of 
you know, take us out of time and into its own time and create relationships within that. I would use, you know, Deleuzian terms, zones of intensity, right? Like these zones where we interact with the power, as you were saying, or with, with affectation, yeah. And affect is a big part of how we interact <coughs> between the whoever's performing and, and the audience, right? This, this kind of subconscious or unconscious relationships that are built through being present or, you know, when you're doing a performance in a room where there's 60, 70 people around you, you cannot but feel their energy in one way or another just by sitting in the room, right? So just to start off with that, and then, you know, whatever happens, right, how they're looking at you, what are you hearing is also part of that. And that, that's where I find that performance art really negotiates a different kind of experience in space. Sorry. That I, uh, what you're saying, I feel when you go to a place where you are like a festival or a gallery or a museum, when you are saying that there's going to be a performance, people come very open to see performance. Mm -hmm. But when you find something at the street that you are walking or in the metro mm -hmm. or something, uh, it's very different, the energy, mm -hmm. because people is not open to performance, because people is walking to their work or whatever. So it's a very, I find very powerful that performance make people stop mm -hmm. and watch sometimes, well, if they have time. <laughs> but uh, for example, in Mexico City, we are working, we were working a lot with a performance in subway stations. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because sometimes people in a rush pass just like, ah, fuck, ah, fuck, ah, fuck, ah, you know, very angry. But sometimes people stop. And uh, one day in this subway station in, in Mexico that is called Pino Suarez, is a big, big, big uh, connection station. And they have these, uh, I don't know, in, in English, vitrinas. Vitrines, yeah. yeah. Like this, yeah? Vitrines. So uh, they, have, they have 14 vitrinas in the subway. It's like five meters each, so it's a very good exhibition area because it's a lot of people. So we invited 14 artists, one by vitrina, and then it was packed with the, peop with the people of the subway. People couldn't walk, and it was like, because everybody was watching a different performance, and it was like a big museum suddenly of performance. And, uh, is, I think performance is so powerful, and I think maybe I'm going to be in problems when I say that, because I think there are three kinds of performances for me. When I try to explain it m at my class what kind of performance is like, I think is performance as art, performance as show, and performance as ritual. It all connected. But the thing is, uh, what I like mo more of performance as, as ritual is that uh, people in the place stop being audience and they become <laughs> witness. And I think it's very, very interesting because um, I'm not thinking about to show something or to teach something, as you were saying. Is I'm trying to share something. And it's the best part of performance, that you can share and you can uh, make people involved with you on with your idea, mm -hmm. and I think performance is very powerful. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we come back to the leaf after the rain, right? No, I'm it's not like a leaf. The, you're not a leaf? No. You're the rain. No, I'm a flower. You're a flower, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just a girl in the world. <laughs> okay, the leaf, please. No, 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 you were coming. Yeah, I was coming back to this idea of the leaf and then to stop, right? And it, it's so interesting how we go through every day, or when you look at people going through the everyday actions of their lives. And, but the performance artist uses those actions to actually make them more meaningful, in a sense, and to kind of connect or reconnect with the everyday life through a different sort of employment of, of elements of that and to make that you know almost meditative moment or to recreate that meditative moment where you can stop and think about 
what you are in the world. And, you know, think about the leaf covered with uh, the rain. So I, that's, that, that, that was, I, when he said that earlier today, I was really struck by that because that's exactly what I was thinking about mm -hmm. performativity and performance art. So, I don't know if... Questions? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> questions. <laughs> So what about other categories? I suppose art life for performance or a life of art for performance or an artful life. Artful life. That can sometimes become performative or life mm -hmm. of performance. But because I mean I was hearing some things and I'm, again like earlier and again now, when you were first thinking about your piece or the way you think about your work or your process, if you're in the studio and then you're in the in a piece, uh, there is a lot of Well, I, I I'm and never out of life, right? You know, like yeah, I know. And you never leave life, you're always, yeah. a, you yeah. know, so th th yeah. this is very strange, like that category art and life, because mm -hmm. art is in life, yeah. always, yeah. so yeah. It's, it's a bit... I was, um, I was actually thinking about, like, how it's broken up, right, and how... Broken? In, well, the, 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 this artificial differentiation between art and life. That we make yeah, that yeah. distinction, mm -hmm. right? That that's broken up by performance art. That art happens in a place and time. That's right. So it makes it meaningful. When you say life, do you mean social reality? I would say both social reality, but also something emotional and other reality. So but what is life? <laughs> Good question. What That's is a art? good question. I mean, what is good question? But unfortunately, life today is overcome by as some sort of existence in zombie-like existence. I mean, you know, this is my political bias, right? That we're so in a hurry many times and we're so taken up by the different kinds of social processes that we're many times not, we're not aware of the, of the other side, like creativity, you know, um, to use the word love or whatever, like to enjoy those mean, right? Those those things, and you know, Herbert Marcuse talked about this, about the the kind of the sublimation, right? And how we're not allowed to be creative, and we as artists are actually enjoying the luxury of thinking about th these things. I, I I consider it a luxury because it's so taken out of what I would say life today. So I don't know if that's no, the way you... That's just to think the conversation raises a lot of really interesting questions around terminology mm -hmm. and language and cliché. Mm -hmm. I think we use an awful lot of cliché in mm -hmm. to describe what it is that we're mm -hmm. doing. And I wonder why we have to resort to clichés. It's because we don't have we don't have sufficient language or something specific enough in the terminology. Can we agree a set of terms? Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and of course, I appreciate that everyone speaks different languages and so on, different views of different types of communication. So I'm just wondering about all these, all these notions that are being discussed. And you just raised on this notion of uh, art and life, and sort of like, well, what, what's that spatial relationship? Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like art's over here and life's over there. So that's what I said. Well, that's there what is was, no, yeah, so there's the, no, so there's no, there's yeah. conception doesn't. Doesn't it doesn't work. Doesn't yeah, work. Doesn't, yeah, I mean, yeah. It doesn't work at all. Yeah, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah, because we, we try not to think about things in spatial metaphors. You know, so it's like, well, are in life, are next to life, are above life, are through life. I don't know. Next to life. How about <laughs> I mean, you know, but I mean, you know, so I mean, I don't think how so we set ourselves to use terminology, which means that we make questions that we can't answer, like what is life. We can't really answer that. Mm -hmm. What is art? We can't really answer that. We can have a go at speculating on it, but there's a sense that we're trying to find a, a solution, I guess. So I was just interested about you know thinking about art as a form of social reality, mm -hmm. with you know in in relationship to these other social realities, the, the commercial uh, social reality, the social reality of recreation of the street. And I'm just also thinking about are, are we people? You know, there's been, a, there's been a lot of reference to people, people who do this, people who don't do that, people who notice these things, people who notice those things. 
people who can come from performances. Uh, so do we not share the same social reality as other people? Sure we do. Well, don't we? Of course well, we do, well, we do but in a way we don't. It, well, if you said if you said there's no difference between art and life, we do. We we share the same thing, yeah. right? There's no difference. Yeah. But again, is we're coming. Is there a possibility to escape? Is there a possibility to evacuate <laughs> social reality? No, there's and no. But 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 it's also the issue of having the luxury again, having the luxury to create art, to be called an artist. That's a luxury because there's people who work you know, 20 hours a day in a factory somewhere who can't afford that luxury and who don't, who are not thinking about, oh, the differentiation between art and life. They don't have that luxury. They are, there are, I'm not saying, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm evacuated for, from social reality. But the fact that, you know, I'm not also negating that we shouldn't be thinking, but I think that there should be a uh, realization that in certain instances that that differentiation between an art and life is quite present. Not in our, maybe not in our lives. I think, I think we're making it more present by the way we're talking about it, well, potentially. potentially. It, this is really interesting, this conversation, because a couple of weeks ago I was at a, a, a conference of art historians and there was someone who was presenting about you know um, situated art practices, and they kept saying about this notion of you know how mm -hmm. artists are trying to squat and change urban you know elements of urban life, and and how it's all kind of incorporated back into the corporate machinery, right? And then I asked the question, okay, but what what about the thinking that everybody is an artist? What you know many have so far said, or we're you know, thinking about Joseph Boyce or situationists, right? So what if, why should we have the luxury of being called an artist? Why can't everybody be an artist and completely, completely destroy this professionalization, institutionalization of art and destroy the art, I would agree completely, this artificial barrier between art and life. But it's my experience that there's never been any luxury or glory in being called an artist. That's quite the reverse. <laughs> no, but I'm, the way that I'm thinking, no, 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 but see, you're thinking about luxury in terms of monetary value. Yeah. I'm thinking about luxury, about luxury, you know. More like a social standing, perhaps. Or social standing. I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking about luxury in that sense. I'm thinking of luxury about emotional, intellectual and creative life, mm -hmm. right? It's the, yeah, and that, and that it's the luxury to reflect upon, upon these upon things. Time. Well, well but this is really all humans have this desire or it should, will ultimately be fulfilled by the reflection that we partake in as artists. Like, who are we to say that that's what people should have the luxury of doing? You know? Like, well, not. Desire the luxury. Not the luxury of entering. Or becoming, you know, like my heroes. Yeah, well, that's not the Especially the time that people have created such uh, mega stars like Mary Margaret or the Lady Gaga. And basically, Gurfumas <laughs> art got absorbed in every aspect of life, and Gurfumas have absorbed everything also. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is useless to try to make all this. Try to find all these differences. It's all exhibition is showing. It's all political. It's all narcissistic. It's all teaching and learning and everything. So it's uh, you can't just uh, uh, segregate things or, or try to uh, create a definition that will uh, satisfy. It won't satisfy you at all. Mm -hmm. I like Lady Gaga. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I like her. Well, I want to say something that. Uh, performance is like going to the market like you can choose whatever you want to buy uh, or see I mean no and uh, I I understand what you want to say because mm. I feel uh, a lot like you're saying like it's a luxury because I work in Mexico in a museum and my I am the, the, the title I have in my card of the museum is boss of the department of performance 
an actual art. So it's, <laughs> of course it's so good that I do whatever I want and I can invite people to my country uh, to do performance and they pay me for that. Of course it's a luxury. But of course it's very difficult to, to speak about this because uh, of course workers are not thinking about art and stuff. But uh, I agree that it's uh, luxury stuff, especially when you work with champagne and all those things. But um, I think it's a big problem with performance that everybody wants to put etiquetas. And, yeah. it's, it's a big problem because, uh, well, in art, not only in performance, like, for example, where should I put this thing called performance? Visual art or performing art or I don't know, it's a big discussion every day with that. So if we are speaking about performance, well, art and life, like kitchen or bathroom, like where you wanna go is like very difficult. And if we start to speak about uh, etiquetas, we will have problems because yeah. it's uh, very difficult to put the things in a, in a cajon, like in cajon. your, no. In a bathroom. No. No, cajon. <laughs> cajon is this place where you put your 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 oh, socks or the, yeah, oh. closet, but not the closet. The thing. A drawer. Your hamper. In Spanish, it's called in, in Spanish, it's called cómoda. But it's been very funny, cómoda. Cómoda, yeah, it's a commode. Commode. So it's very. I think I think we should not stop thinking uh, like if it's luxury or not luxury. I think is very good that we have performance in life because yeah. but I, I think I'm really I was really misunderstood when I wanted to use the word it, but no, because, because I don't I have another agree. word for luxury I mean luxury is like immediately it, it brings up these these ideas of, of commodity which I want to avoid I don't think I, I'm thinking that intellectual work or emotional work or leisure time or you know, just not doing anything, right? Sitting around and lazing around, right? Is a luxury. And all of these possibilities that carry with a desire, enjoyment, you know, um, wish fulfillment, play, imagination, um, all of these things are luxurious in a sense that we're deprived of them. If, they, we, if we weren't deprived of them, or if they weren't taken away through institutionalization and structuring of life, then they wouldn't be luxury, right? They would be uh, part of the everyday. Sometimes I, you know what, sometimes I actually think that I would love to be in jail because then I would have the luxury of thinking. So, it's, it's how you use your time, I guess. And I mean, it, you know, saying that being, being an artist is a luxury, well, for me, I'm an artist so that I won't be a murderer. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what a differentiation. I, I know it sounds like a good joke, but really, if I had not become an artist, I would have become a killer. Yeah. And this. It was uh, it was necessity. necessity. Well, I mean, it's it's in a sense these are these things are necessary. They're a necessity of life, but they're turned into luxury because we're deprived of them. Sorry. I think it's also really beautiful in a way that we can communicate about this and this labeling problem and the terminology problem and that we maybe don't have a common language as artists because that is why we make the art we do. Mm -hmm. Because what we do is ineffable and this level of communication that I've experienced watching each of your pieces, like I feel I know a part of you or you know a part of me. I'm, you don't even know my name. We've never met. I don't know. And that's that's what's important here. So, in a way, I love that we can't communicate about this. I think yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, that's why we are doing this. If we, if we could say uh, everything we are doing and everything we are thinking and put like etiquette on everything, it, why would we do art?
No, I, I, yes, I would totally agree. And the word is privilege. Yeah. Yet somewhere in that narration you just gave, there is a leap. Like you said, to see a photograph and said uh, the performance uh, on the moon is one that is very, uh, it, 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 bound, it bounds over uh, meditation of space and, and time. And I, and I think if, if one has a mind, to determine that as their work is also a quality that one one is actually perceiving. I mean, it's beyond title in some way. I think you know, that, 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 that most people, even people who work say nowadays, they find moments in their lives, whether it's walking through a cemetery or a square, where they have moments of, if we call it reflection, a moment where they feel something powerful, even if they are subjugated. Better term where their subjectivity is forced to have to play out motions through a system, a complex system of power. There's always a moment, and you can always go to sleep or put it in your job where you have that experience, right? But it's, it's like you're looking at the moon. But you feel something, and you may or may not call yourself an artist. Like children call themselves artists, artists, and they are, and they call themselves that. I did when I was 12, and I believed I was, you know? Yeah, or you may not call yourself an artist because you experience things in life that are reverent or whatever. It doesn't necessarily put you put on a platform. I appreciated when I was taught by an artist that a performance didn't have to be something that was set up within a certain confine. Mm -hmm. This artist, a Canadian, uh, Diana, I'm not sure his name right, or five, who you know, really opened my mind to the idea of what could be an experience that could fall into the category of performance by photographing a moment where she was winking at the moon. And it just changed things for me, like it really did. <laughs> well, then the focus, the focus is on the work. Mm. You know, and I think that's what we, we seem to be skirting around. I mean, the work is what, what it is about. <coughs> it's not about the title. And I think the, the more we focus on the work, the more we are able to get somewhere. That's, that's what that's what fuel us from not being alive. And I think it's it's, it's uh, life fulfilling in some world, life uh, supported. We're looking to get somewhere where something happens, something is being transported. I mean, I'm not I'm not looking at it as a, even as an escape. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it as a misreality. Mm -hmm. 
And I think bodies are generally uh, making us aware of that in all our acts. See, that's where uh, my interest is. And come back to the work. I don't care what the hell we call it. It depends on our investment. Maybe we have problems with when we stick to those things, then we don't see the cost anymore. We don't see the fertilization of those That's limiting. Yeah. It's not the right material. It's 
it's not the right manifestation of the text. And similarly, Martini is used in the sort of handwriting around the place, which, which when you're looking at everything sort of visually and sensorially, then you get these kind of these texts which seem to want to overwrite and say, I hope you understand what this is about. I don't know if you think that's a fair comment, but uh. Well, of course, like the piece is not finished, right? It's never finished. So I take this comment as, yeah, it's a reflection. Like I, sometimes we do things that maybe I needed to, to have something to reassure myself that, okay, I'm, I didn't think about it. I'm just saying it could happen, you know, I'm not perfect. And no, but in, in a sense that it's, it's good because then maybe next piece I, I won't need it or maybe I still will put it because for somehow I, I do it also for myself, right? But I think it's kind of like a fitting addition between the description and the description. Yeah, yeah. To me it wasn't a description. It was like, because often I work with collages of images, so it might not have a direct way, a, a direct uh, link to the other. Work, you know. You may not have seen uh, Martini's work necessarily when she actually had those words on her body. The first night, yeah. Where they yeah. actually had. It. And also, I did a little actions before doing the sky that nobody saw because I was alone in the space. Yeah, no, no, definitely, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
you. <laughs> I, at this point, it's two o'clock, and being a moderator, I have to put my foot down and say that uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we can continue this after unofficially, but uh, just for now, for the filming sake, um, <laughs> we're gonna, I'm gonna have to say that we're gonna have to end. And I didn't think that we're gonna get into such a heated d debate, <laughs> which is great. Um, so I thank all of my fellow panel presenters and I thank them for their work, which I'm sure we all enjoyed immensely. And I thank you for your comments and, you know, discussing it um, so openly here with all of us. Thank you. Thank you.